What's up Samurai? Today we're going to be doing a quick guide on mounts in Velorin because they are going to vary between tanky, between slower, and so on and so forth. It's not a very super complex system, but generally speaking, it is something that can be very, very vital to your gaming experience because of the fact that there is no fast traveling, and so getting a mount can end up being really, really important. So one of the quick easy things to do is when you're in town, just make sure that you end up checking all of the merchants because they're going to end up selling collars. You can craft the collar as well, which I'll show you right here, the crafting components. You can craft this on your person, but you need to have leather strips and rubies. So the way that you get leather strips is you'll have to get animal parts from, uh, well, killing wildlife and so on and so forth. Uh, and then over at the tanning rock rack, you can end up crafting simple leather from all of your animal hide. Uh, and then you can convert some of the uh, simple leather into leather strips. The ruby, on the other hand, is going to end up being a bit more difficult. So sometimes you can find emeralds and rubies and stuff in a merchant's inventory. But as you can see, these, uh, these items end up becoming quite costly. So the ruby in particular, is going to be 459.6 coins in order to buy it from a merchant while its sell value is considerably less. The reason why I'm pointing this out is because as you saw, buying a collar is probably going to be more efficient for your time and effort, especially because rubies and so on and so forth, gemstones can end up being used to craft rings and amulets, which in my opinion would end up being a little bit more important for your character. Now, once you do end up having the collars, what you're gonna wanna do is you just click and drag it onto your hot bar and I got it on my number two value right and essentially when you see an animal in the wild that is hopefully not hostile towards you you'll walk up to it press the equivalent number of it being on your hot bar and then you'll be able to trade or mount the mount now the antelope near as I can tell is the fastest mountain in the game with turtles and bears being a lot slower but being a little bit more tanky because the problem is that your mounts are always going to end up engaging in combat because they have no AI. Now the thing is that when your mount dies it won't come back so you pretty much got to treat these creatures as being exposable and so that's why it pays to have a lot of callers on hand at all times so that when you go to a specific place and start adventuring or what have you and then your mount inevitably dies well then at least you have some more callers so that you can get another one now why can we end up trading with the mount well you can trade your mount various food items that it will then use if it starts getting super duper weak. Now, another little tidbit of knowledge for you is that you can end up taming multiple creatures. Uh, I've only gotten up to three. I don't know if you can get higher than that. If somebody does know, you can sound off in the comments. But generally speaking, the only reason that you would want multiple creatures is possibly because you're trying to get some of the tankier creatures to help you out in dungeons. It's not going to help out so much in the end game dungeons, but certain creatures like, um, you know, the llamas in particular, they'll actually rear up and kick enemies and they have some considerable knockback to them that can keep them alive quite well, uh, especially if you have somebody rocking a healing staff because a healing staff's abilities are going to end up working for your allies uh, or your pets. So it's a pretty decent way of being able to handle dungeons that you might not otherwise be able to handle alone quite yet. But with all of that said, thanks for watching. Smash like, sub for more, buy the merch you want to support the channel, and have a great day, everybody.